you were South Africa planning for this game, where are the chinks in Ireland's armor? What do you have to be careful about even when you're attacking this Ireland team? Well, firstly, I'm glad they can stop with the bullshit about not looking at the Springboks and not looking at Ireland because they've been playing this for over a year, if not longer. And and it's also fascinating because they haven't played a lot in the last years. Last November was the first time in five years, wasn't it, that they played each other? So we haven't had oversaturation of this. And there's a newness and a freshness to it. And they're the two best teams in the world, the reigning champs against number one, all those elements. Even Neen Abbott pointed out yesterday, very similar squads in terms of age profile, experience in the in the match day 23. So that makes it a, a really juicy matchup. In terms of what they've laid out in their 23, I think it's really clear the way they're going after it. It's going to be the let's fuck them up physically, Razi uh, approach uh, and trying to utterly disrupt the rhythm that makes Ireland the the best attacking team in, in the world. When they get that rhythm, they're, they're close to unstoppable is a strong word but they're very difficult to stop because their decision making is so elite because they have so many guys who can be first receiver second receiver or finishing out wide they have such fluidity and flexibility that when they have quick ball and momentum they just they just flow beautifully their set piece strikes as well as we saw last weekend they've definitely been holding stuff and and are now ready to unleash it and you've got to disrupt that at source again they've got to compete in the air they've got to counter rock they've got a jackal as you mentioned when they bring on those those players off the bench and there are a few in that team who can who can do it as well so it's it's just about fucking shit up for ireland and, and i've no doubt that that's what they'll be saying and that's how they'll be talking and the Springboks are brilliant they're brilliant at clear concise messages they know they're more physically powerful than anyone in the world they, they are and, and everyone knows that and and wisely they they back those strengths to the hilt again i don't mean to undersell them guys like peter steph detoy are brilliantly skillful and technically superb but they're also really really strong and, and, and big so i've no doubt that it'll be patently clear what they're trying to do with lots of little flourishes nina Aber and felix jones are really smart and razi as well as though he's become the pantomime villain he's a really clever rugby brain as, as well and, and they'll have picked out i'm sure lots of things that will will become apparent but the base plan there is to be more physical than Ireland can can deal with. I think the fact that Ireland did get that mall try that only alludes to is is another boost to their confidence. And they'll take great belief from having done that and having beaten France in February and against another massive pack. That question isn't really talked about now, is it? Before that Springboks match last year, it was the big question mark around Ireland. Are they physically able to deal with the, the biggest sides? When they're close to their peak, yes, they are. But that means they've got to be close to their their peak again. There was there, I just checked there. There was another try in the in the match, and I'd almost forgotten. It. And it was it was Ireland counter rock, and and they disrupted the rhythm and they scored with some of that skill set that I'm I'm talking about by flashing the ball from left from right to left. And Hansen got over in the corner after Keenan and, and O'Brien put him away. So it, what we're talking about in terms of the box and what they'll try to do to Ireland. Equally, it, it applies to Ireland. They're really good at disrupting rhythm. And, and as the box look to set up kick positions and, and dictate the territory, I'm, I'm sure that Ireland will be bringing that destructive mindset as well. So it, it really marries up and it balances out and it feels like a 50-50 game more than any I've, I've been thinking about in a long time. It is interesting, all that like the physicality of the box is almost the overarching team to the game whether or not Ireland can deal with that and uh, you look at the 7-1 split as sort of an illustration of South Africa fully backing that going full box as Murray says when you look back on that November game though I remember Murray at the time felt as though the Ireland pack got the better of the box that day we, we were sort of suggesting Bernard and I at the time that it was more that they achieved parity and that that was enough regardless of what you felt about it at the time do you feel as though they can get to that point again this weekend because it will be amped up by South Africa there's no doubt about it it's a World Cup game it's going to go to another level do Ireland have another gear in them as well compared to what we saw 10 months ago yeah, I think so I, I, I think their track record probably speaks to that doesn't it We've got a Murray's reference to the big boxes that ticked in the last 18 months a big test series win in New Zealand how utterly dominant they were of a New Zealand pack over there the French win obviously South Africa and I think they've just got a they obviously have to play at a tempo that suits them uh, and, and try and play, shape the game that's going to play to their strengths. I think if it does become 
a stop start set piece to set piece game. Clearly, the balance shifts towards South Africa. Now, in saying that, we have seen an emergence of South Africa playing with more ambition. I, I think they will be dangerous off transition rugby. I think Ireland's kick chase will have to be excellent because in Chelsea and Kobe, Aaron Dessa and, and Williams, so you have a, a ridiculously attacking minded back three that don't necessarily have the kicking acumen that we're potentially used to with South African back threes. So I think they will try and destructure the game at times themselves. And, and as I said, the attacking kicking game that we saw throughout the rugby championship, even in that game in Twickenham against New Zealand, there's five or six occasions in the 22 where South Africa showed a little bit of intricacies and variation to their attack. So I don't think we can, yes, they've, they've selected obviously uh, 15 forwards to go after the Irish pack, but they, they do, compared to probably three or four years previously, there is some more levels and more layers to how South Africa are playing. So I think Ireland would be foolish to be sort of focused. I think they've got to expect a little bit more ambition and variation to South Africa's attack, even to what we saw in, in the Aviva last November. And Libok is the big difference, isn't he, since last November. It was Willem set 10 that day and he wasn't outstanding in that yeah. match. And Libok, his range of passing and attacking kicking, his vision is really, really excellent. But again, on the flip side, he's relatively new to test rugby. And if if Ireland had a similarly inexperienced out half, you can only imagine the way the box would be talking about him. And I actually think Ireland will. I think they have that vicious, ruthless violent edge without being really vocal about it publicly they'll be looking to leave shots on him of course they will like they do any 10 and and get in his head I'm sure Piero Manny will have a few words for him uh, remind him about URC finals etc and how uh, yeah you can imagine you don't I don't even need to to make up for Manny's words it's obvious what he'd be saying and they'll get at him but he and the rents are you know they they underline that it's a a team with that counter-attacking threat. Colby back on the wing. He played full back against Ireland in November and Villains a slot in there. So a couple of key differences. Faf de Klerk was on the bench that day and he, you know, he he'll add a lot of nous and experience to what they do. But even looking at it, Ireland's pack bar Kelleher, who may start at, at Hooker, it'll be the same starting pack and and they'll feel they can pick up where they left off the the last time. Yeah, the other intriguing one there, Murray, was uh People might not remember Chelsea Kobe goal kick that day against Ireland. So it was a three point game, and Chelsea Kobe was one from three off the tee as well. So again, um, small, small margins. And that's it. Libok has been, what, 60% in the championship, rugby championship, 70% in the warm ups, and, and 40% off the tee against Scotland in the first game. So that's another doubt in, in their minds. Maybe the clerk or Kobe will take it on again, but. It, Libok, from their point of view, nailing a few of those kicks would be huge for them, particularly as they try to to get that lead that they're so good in when when they get into that position. 